As you know, there are three different models of Steam decks. Today, though, we'll be talking about the lowest end SKU, the 64GB version of the Steam Deck, and whether or not it's worth it. Is the 64GB version enough? Let's talk about just using the 64GB version as is. Many people just want to buy the cheapest Steam Deck and supplement it with a 1TB SD card. Given how well games perform on the SD card, it's a pretty good thought, right? Well, there's a really good reason for that. Your shader cache and compatibility data is stored on your SSD. Actually, it's not even an SSD in your 64GB model. It's an eMMC drive, which of course is noticeably slower than your average SSD. But that's besides the point. The point is, your eMMC drive is going to be filled to the brim as you download more games onto your SD card. And of course, as with any OS, once you fill your boot drive to the brim with data, your operating system practically becomes unusable. And with 64 gigabytes, you don't have a whole lot of space. You definitely shouldn't download any games onto your internal drive. And even so, managing all of that shader cache and compatibility data it can be maddening at times, especially when games don't automatically delete the shader cache when you uninstall them. Yeah, that's right. Of course, where Valve falls short, the community provides. There's this really neat utility by Scott called the Steam Deck Shader Cache Killer. You can select which game's shader caches you want to delete. You also have the ability to move your shader cache onto your SD card if so desired. Though for AAA titles, I don't think I can recommend that, but it was also several months since I last tested it. Maybe things are a little different now. So, is the 64GB version worth it? Well, it depends on how good you are with computers. If you're not good with computers at all, I would recommend going up to the 256GB version minimum. For starters, if you want the 64GB version, you'll have to buy an SD card. It's practically mandatory especially if you want to play any AAA titles on your Steam Deck. Of course, you have to contend with the fact that you don't get 64 gigabytes of storage. You get around 46.5 gigabytes of usable space. You know, after the OS as well as overprovisioning and all of the other stuff drives need to function. This happens with all drives, by the way. And of course, shader caches. Obviously, not every game follows this rule, but generally speaking, bigger games will have bigger shader cache files. And when you combine that with OS instability when you fill up your internal storage to the absolute maximum, I think it's fairly obvious why I recommend getting at least a 256GB version. Or heck, get a 512. What if you're an intermediate computer user? Then it's probably worth it. As long as you know how to read instructions, you'll make do. But what about the advanced user? The person buying the 64GB version just to swap it out with a much higher SSD. Is it worth it then? Well, you'd save a pretty penny by buying the cheapest model and getting an SSD replacement. And if you're extra comfortable with swapping out internal parts or working inside electronics, then it's doubly worth it. I personally bought a 256GB Steam Deck and upgraded the internal drive to 2TB and it was not cheap, but it was absolutely worth it. The final verdict is, if you're new to PCs or you're inexperienced with PCs, I recommend going a tier up, at minimum. And if you're comfortable with working inside of electronics, you can totally open up the Steam Deck, swap out the 64GB drive for a much higher capacity SSD, you'll save a couple of bucks too. But do keep in mind that if you undergo this process and you mess up the Steam Deck somehow by messing around inside of it, you'll definitely void your warranty. So general rule of thumb, don't fuck up. If you're gonna fuck up, just don't. If you wish to directly support High Tech Low Life, you should check out the link in the description below for our Patreon page. And if you like this video, you should give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well. And if you want, you can also join my Discord server. As always, links in the description down below for all of this.